Hey guys, Papa Rome's here. We're water trapping 2019 spring season. Stay tuned. Alright guys, so so far this morning I've been doing pretty well. I got um I missed one beaver. I had uh two muskrat I got and now I'm checking my line and I don't see my trap here. So we're gonna pull them up, see what we got. Drop deep drop here, I can't even see down there. Oh, we got something. Got a beaver guys, another one. Awesome. Ooh. Not like the 52 or 54 pounder the other day, but I'll take it. It's a good sized beaver. Not a bad beaver at all. Okay, here's the reset. And every time I catch a beaver, they almost always have sticks in their mouth and I end up getting them that they drop them. I pick them up because they already have their flavor and scent on them. Plus I add my own caster. But here's the trap and one tip I could give you is put that trap at least three to four inches down for beaver. Maybe not four but like three, three and a half. I notice if you're above it you'll nick them a lot. If you're three to four inches they get a full stroke and you get them fully around their foot or their back leg. What I created what I, here. Look what I created. I got a number five right down in there. And a beaver was actually coming up here and he had all these chewed sticks. You could smell that caster in here real strong from that beaver. So I said, well, he's naturally coming in here already. And I ended up just running my guide wire up to the tree. Just gonna get some of these out. That's it. I got number five right in there. All right, well, I gotta go check my traps. We had six inches of snowfall in higher elevations, and I'm getting a mix of ice, sleet, and uh, rain coming down right now. Pretty rough conditions to be trudging through swamps. We're about to get 25 to 35 mile an hour winds, so it's gonna be even more dangerous walking through the woods. And, um, Hopefully, I don't know, hopefully it's worth it, but this is the life of a trapper. It's a tough life for an outdoorsman, that's for sure. I put this patch on. Somehow he got stuck. That's a big beaver. Holy cow. Alright, I'm going to take care of him. I had a feeling I'll get one here. Well, this is a big one. I had a feeling we'd get one here. I just put it last night and he, uh, that's what he did. He ripped my anchor. Luckily I had it snared up around there and the ground and mud is so soft here. He ripped that anchor right out and uh, got wedged in these trees. So he obviously came out around that side, but man, what a big beaver. This might be my, my new record. I don't know if my 50 pounder beat him or not, but it's pretty close to it. So look at the girth on that thing. Wow. It's gonna be a nice, beautiful cape. That's pretty good. So I was looking for some Real big beavers in here. I don't even know if I'm gonna go carry him. Just gonna set my night watch here.
See, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm just going to leave it. The trap is sitting right perfect right in front of that stick with the gland on it. But that beaver, I'm going to actually widen this one up a little bit. See how it runs right down my wire? And that's out there good. You know, they're going to come right in here. And that's, that's it. <laughs> I got to get that beaver in that bucket. Traps. There are other traps now. Make sure I got my gun on my side. Yep. Okay. Not bad. That's why I said if I had a pack basket, first off, I feel like they would break. I have them. I just have pads here, a waist pad. I have a waist strap. So I have a video if you want to check it out on what I keep in my pack and how I trap run my foot line. Um, it's a good load having this. These beavers, no less than 50 pounds. I'm going to say 55 to 60. Muscar and I have some gear in the back. And I'm in my hip boots. I'm just getting back to the truck. And there he is. Got all dirty off to clean him off when I get home. But, uh, he's a big boy. Like a little bear. Nice tail on this rat. Big fat, fat tail too. Nice, right? All right, so I got my scale here. It's all zeroed out. Ooh, almost like Vex. There you have it. Almost 55. This is a big beaver. This is a big, big beaver. Nice. Gonna get me a beaver in the morning. <laughs> so I wanna show you why I picked the locations I picked for a reason. When they come up this river, okay, this is fast moving current. They're either gonna do two sides. They're either gonna hug on this side or they're gonna hug on that side. And the reason why they do it, they come up and they chew on fresh growth. These are my sticks from last year right there where I actually caught all five of them in one week, five days. And this is more flat, calm water. So they're gonna come. They're going to hit these little pockets in here, these out pouches, and then they're going to shoot back up and go into the current to get up into the next pool. So when you're doing the, the mound set that I'm doing, you want to pick these little pockets, like that little bump out here or that bump, that bump. But what I look for is a steep drop off, so I use the least amount of wire. And when they get caught, they go right down and they drown quicker. You don't want them messing around, chewing out like I had last week. Holy crap. Well, I got a beaver foot. The other option is they'll come around. Now there's a little cove back in there and you could do it in these here, block them off with a conibear. bear. Okay. Get them that way as well. All right, so I found this nice tree. The beavers chewed it, you can see right here. But you can see the beavers nipped every one of these branches and this is a live tree. Therefore, this is gonna be an ideal tree for bait. Okay, so I take a lighter gauge wire, it's easier to wrap, and I just wrap up a nice flat shaped rock. And then I take my other wire and I wrap it right through. Usually do a couple twists through the whole thing. Come up like this. And I'll make sure I have it twisted in there pretty good. I've yet to have a beaver come out of this set once they're caught. They're they go down and they're drowned. That's it. You know, you don't lose them.
Okay, so this set is done. And I'll show you what it looks like here. I got long guide sticks coming all the way out. And then I have a short guide stick on that side. And that one's really planted while this one they could just come right up and down on it. And then to really get them to funnel closer, I put these dead sticks. Make sure they're dead. And I put a little bit of dirt covering, sand covering the, um, the trap itself. This way people, I see fishermen are coming up and down here. I don't want them to steal my trap. I mean, they're going to see this and know what it is probably, but this is a lot of eye appeal. Anything coming up the river beaver-wise, they're going to know the set. They're going to know that's fresh and they're going to come right to it. If you notice I have my first jaw planted really nice that they can't even notice a difference when they come up and go right in that and then if you notice here I have a little tunnel here mink will travel that mink will travel this edge they'll go up under there you never know you might get a mink by the body I'm just getting up on my location here and uh, didn't bring my camera so my cell phone's gonna have to do but I got a muskrat in my beaver trap see that's why I told you that bank there is important to keep it open. And the reason why is mink could come up muskrat. I never even caught a muskrat or saw any muskrat houses or anything in here. But uh yep, we got a rat. And then number four, good rat too. First rat I ever caught out of here. I'm pretty happy with that. You guys know I like muskrat trap. Wow, look at all the glands coming out. Holy cow. Wouldn't be surprised to get another muskrat so in here. Set. And uh, basically, this muskrat's letting out a lot of gland fluor. So I just kind of wet him and let him go all over because I don't mind catching muskrat again. But I also make homemade beaver lure. And that's what I put right there. And I pinned it in with a stick. You see the pan? They're going to come right to it. And I love these double long springs. They're a pain in the butt to set. You need a setter and tools but um you know when you're after they're anchored in because you can't get them out of the mud but uh this is perfect the beavers are going to come up that little twig will keep them out but it'll guide a beaver over but it'll keep a mink or muskrat right on just like i said yesterday and uh here i have it pinched off again coming all the way out to my drowner rock and we should have a fur here in the morning nice set always and excited to have We got to get home and skin them. Yeah. He carries his food in a backpack. Okay. So that's pretty much how he's going to be on my back. Just like that. See these straps? He's cinched down on them. They're good and tight. And he ain't going out. Now I have him secure. Muskrats below. Ready to go. The hike out with all the weight is always better than the hike in. Okay, well, today's the last day and I just finished up pulling all my traps. Looks like the majority of the beaver are all the way down river and uh, they're a bit hard to get up here. I only put three traps for the last four days. You got one of them with the 330 Conibear. bear. Um, pretty happy with that. Pulled out a few more beaver about 45 minutes away. Did a lot of good scouting for next season. Found a lot of beaver, a lot of muskrat, mink and otter as well. So we should have a good season next year, um, God willing. and. If you guys like what you saw don't forget to subscribe you could follow me on instagram and facebook i always put out a lot of good content on there that i don't put out on youtube live feeds as well so check it out tell your friends i appreciate it and uh hopefully you like my content take care guys